Top 5 Greatest Sci-Fi Ships When it comes to the world of sci-fi, we're taken to a whole new places by the best of the vehicles that go from world to world, from adventure to adventure. Indeed, there are several names that evoke feelings of facing new challenges and new adversaries, and in some cases, some real misadventures. But which ships are truly the best? What names evoke the series? They come in more than any others. And what of those ships that are only barely out there? I will admit, there were quite a few contenders. These are my own opinions on it, not a comprehensive list, and in some cases, naturally, while others needed some extra help. So, set course, sit back, relax, and let's get started. For the entire Star Trek franchise, this ship is the one that started it all. Before, the idea of a spaceship was usually attached to something that looked like a rocket, fins and gents and pointy edges, but then the Enterprise came on set with no jets, just three cylinders and a saucer attached with fin-like structures. The original was supposedly built to house over 400 crew, it included wreck areas as well as vendomatic style cafeterias. I think it's very interesting that they didn't use replicators at the beginning, mostly because I know the secret behind the replicators in the next generation and onward. I can't tell you exactly what it is, but let's just say that the post-original idea would not be quite so appealing once you found out what it was made of. The ship was built with the idea that warping space shortens the distance between destinations, relatively appearing to go much faster, clear from light speed to almost infinite speed in measurements. I will admit I don't think warp drive is that big a deal, even though I think the idea might have some merit. There are light speed theories that do more than just warp space. They're all very interesting to study. Based off the original ship of the original name, I'm talking about the Reimagined series where the Cylons tried to kill humanity because they grew out of their control. At the start of the new series, the ship isn't as shiny and clean as the original series it's based off of. In fact, the Galactica is about to be decommissioned and turned into a museum. The older systems and the older style Viper fighters all seem very quaint to the people who see the integrated fighters and systems as a vast improvement. But when the Cylons exploit this, knocking the colonial fleet out of it in one fell stroke, the antiquated almost museum becomes a lead in the war not to exterminate the Cylons, but to save the leftover of humanity. I particularly like the, the grunge style ship designs. After all, just because we think of space as a vacuum, it's not really clean. And the concept of pure good guys and pure bad guys is basically thrown out the window when we find out that some of what we may call heroic characters have flaws, deeply personal ones that sometimes come up as well as held beliefs, especially regarding to religion. I'm not going to say which one I would be because, as you know, that's one of the rules on this channel. The Valstar and the rest of the colonial fleet moves by hyperjumping. Basically, it's like a wormhole without the wormhole, a way to skip from one current coordinates to the uh, where they want to be. It's also shown how vital supplies get reloaded and refueled as these kinds of things would be desperately needed for such a large and fugitive fleet. Perhaps the most iconic ship in movie history, the Falcon is pretty much accurately described as a piece of junk and garbage. Throughout the Star Wars saga, one particular book in the uh, Star Wars Expanded Universe actually tells of how it came by the name Millennium Falcon. The YT-1300 line was supposed to be just a regular series of cargo cruisers, but when one particular ship seemed like she just didn't want to settle in and be like all the others, the Falcon was born. Over a century of use, she had a history of going even once thought of as destroyed. When they finally tracked down who named her the Falcon, it was simply because she flew like a Falcon and was liable to last a thousand years or a millennium. Like all the ships in the Star Wars universe, the Falcon basically has a faster than light hyperdrive that, by some accounts, may seem like it's a speed thing. However, George Lucas has mentioned in a commentary for one of the DVDs that it was more a matter of navigational computing rather than any 
fractions above FTL. She has been using many thoughts, even as a possible strange rock formation in the Baltic Sea. This is just one example of how the ship has entered into our culture because there are very few you, who won't think of this ship when famous spaceships are brought up. One of the greatest sci-fi shows ever, Firefly was the classification of the ship central to the show of the same name. It was also the bookend name to the series, the Serenity, both the original pilot and the eventual movie being called that. It's funny how, of all these ships on this list, the Serenity is weaponless and moves somewhere close to the speed of light. She mostly flies around the system that has been adapted as a new home for humanity once Earth that was was all used up. It's interesting how the culture blending seems to work out and how it seems the government of the system is a combination of both good and bad. Perhaps it's an anti-hero mentality, the darkness that is so obvious in the characters, or perhaps it, it's just the idea that Joss Whedon had a, of having nine characters look at the same spot in space and see nine different things. Serenity's engine system was not fully detailed in the series, just that she was able to last a very long time. Sure, when Captain Reynolds first saw her, he fell immediately in love, and perhaps the people who wrote in her also loved her for how she was able to take care of them so well. And maybe, because we saw every part of her, it's one of the many reasons the brown coats have stuck together. But which tip takes the top spot? What vehicle can really show us what's inside once we get to know her? What ship can take the top spot is the best of them all. Just by naming the ship, I'll bet you all thought of a little blue wooden box with a light flashing on top. It is, interestingly enough, one of the crucial ingredients in what I believe is the greatest sci-fi epic ever, Doctor Who. Of course, we know the little blue box isn't the whole of the ship. The TARDIS is extremely large inside. We know of only a few rooms in the structure, but we also know that she is alive. Stolen when she was a museum piece by a Time Lord that wanted to buck the non-interference directive of his species and do what he could to make things right, the TARDIS seems to be one mystery after another, with rooms that appear as needed, sometimes combining two rooms into one. And her appearance, sans a police box exterior, seems to be as whimsical as the Doctor himself, and at times, even the exterior can change only a little bit at a time. With the course through many adventures and many worlds over more than 50 years, it's not likely the journey of the TARDIS will ever end anytime soon. So that's it. If you enjoyed this little journey into my sci-fi loving mind, I suggest you take a look at the Arbok Zone Productions link in the description below to see my own contributions to my Fire Sword Saga. Also, give this video a like and a comment, maybe leaving your own favorites that I might have missed, and subscribe with a circle with a hat in it, and we'll see you all on Saturday with a brand new viewpoint.